Okay. Call this meeting to order. Determine there's a quorum present. Commissioner Wardlaw, Commissioner Vasquez, Commissioner Nettleton, Commissioner Flotis. Glad to have you back, sir. Thank you, sir. We have a quorum. All five members present. Uh, Bo, if you would, uh, Commissioner Nettleton, please lead uh, us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> um, Judge, do you mind? Could we have, like, a moment of silence for the men and women that are headed over to Iraq? Please, just check that off my list. If y'all don't mind, please. Approving <coughs> minutes for October 2nd, October 16th, and October 2nd. Second. Have a motion, Commissioner Melton? Just on for November. November? November. Okay, I decided. Did I miss November? Is there such a vital? Oh, okay. <laughs> Approve all, 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 all the minutes. Approve all the minutes. Second, it says. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flores. Folks, any questions? All those in favor? All right. All right. Five zero vote. <clears throat> I had been rushing through this and I'm visiting with a couple of commissioners. We're going to slow down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my fault. My bad. Uh, citizens' comments? We have none. <clears throat> Subdivision plan. So we'll get to that one. So right now, none. Certificates of compliance, none. Monthly reports from elected officials. Second. <coughs> have a motion, Commissioner Melton. Second, Commissioner Flores. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Approval of bills. Move. I have a motion, Commissioner Wardlaw. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. I have a, on the bills. There's a lot of stuff that we paid for the veterans' office. Uh, I guess it was uh, an <coughs> accident. It was something like a country collision or something. Okay. Uh, those, I guess, will be paid. We're paying them out of veterans' office, but we will, will we be reimbursed. We have reimbursed. Okay. So all those funds have come back. The other deal on the bills to be paid. Mm -hmm. I think we visited, they were well, visited with you on that propylene yeah. settling. Yeah. But yeah. They had a chance to visit with all the welders. Uh, we do, we have uh, oxygen and settling, but they wanted to go, us to go to that propylene on the bills. It's so supposed to be safer and last longer. Yeah. And they were to change out the tips on our coaches, but mm -hmm. it's supposed to work better. So if y'all get a chance to go. Grass. It's yeah, actually it's cheaper. It's, yeah. it's cheaper, and I think each bottle of settling, one bottle of oxygen, and this other one of propylene, I do like six bottles of oxygen. Okay. Yeah. They're not going to leave us wrong. <coughs> They're experts. Sir? They're experts. Okay. So we have a motion, Commissioner Wardenau, second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Treasurer's report. This one will be action. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, remarkably, even though our interest has been has gone down since we started investing last year. We still have made $18,738. Why did you go down? The rates dropped? Or the rates are just dropping. Are dropping. What are we rates. down to? Uh, I think it's 1.7, somewhere around there. Um, let me check. It should be right here. 1.662. Last year we started at about 2.4. Did the Fed drop the rate or what? I would imagine so. I mean, it's yes. just affecting all the way around. It seems uh, every company that we're looking at is just about there. So that's the interest for the year? No, no. That's the, uh, the interest that we made, Buffalo, yes. <coughs> but, uh, the, the interest that they paid right now, what you, the dollar amount you gave was not for the year. No, 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 no. That, that's, just, that's just for last month. Yes, for the year, is how what was that amount to? Oh, I, I'd have to look back, go back in that. We're almost 200,000. Uh, projecting. Our projection was, was, was 175, but I think we were going to hit just above that once we get to April. 
we're still doing pretty good. Better than what we Oh yeah, better than what we were. Better than what we did before. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, motion Commissioner Nettleton. Second Commissioner Flotus. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Uh, number eleven, Doctor's <coughs> report. Move. Second. <coughs> I have a motion, Commissioner uh, Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotus. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five Aye. zero vote. <coughs> I need to put my phone. Uh, item 12, presentation by Jack uh, Hessian and Paul J. Hirsch with Madison Group Affairs, Inc. Thank you all for coming. Yes, sir. Thank you. How do you say last name? Hirsch Hessian. 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 Kind of like man of the marriage. <laughs> Hopefully we can be that good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to do handouts rather than a PowerPoint. Just a couple of things to put all this in context with, with what's going on in D.C. Um, it's a zoo. Well, it's a little bit confusing at times. Um, but, you know, they say if you like sausage, don't want to make it. Yes. <laughs> Um, but uh, uh, <laughs> at least I got a couple last hours. Um, and forty-three thousand dollars. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay, Judge. It's all good. Though. Yes, sir. Sorry. Um, you know, when I first started in government forty years ago, they moved the uh, fiscal year from thirty June. To, to 30 September because they needed more time to get things done. Well, now I think they're going to move it to 30 December because they can't get things done until 30 December, it looks like. But the last week of the year, the president was real busy, and as was Congress and the Senate. Uh, they passed an appropriations bill in two parts. They had a, uh, what they called minibus. They had four bills in one, in one minibus and eight bills in another. And the last week of, of December, they passed that to avert having to go to a continuing resolution again. Uh, and so that was taken care of. The uh, National Defense Authorization Act was also done last week of the year. And that uh, the big thing on that is it creates a new military service. Some of you all have seen this. It's the United States uh, Space Force. And basically what it is, long story short, it's the uh, Space Air Force Space Command kind of morphs into its own service. So they'll eventually have new uniforms, new uh, emblems, a new fight song or whatever you want to call it, a new anthem. Um, it will be a separate service. It will be, be very similar to what we have with the Marine Corps and the Department of the Navy, that kind of relationship. And um, I guess the big fight now is to see where it's going to be located, the headquarters, whether it's going to be in Colorado, Alabama. Or Del Rio. Sir? Or Del Rio. <laughs> yeah, or Del Rio, right. <laughs> okay. uh, We're not on that list. Would it be a better place? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Um, and so they'll, they'll find out. I think what's going to happen is uh, there'll be some politics. And I, and I put this akin to back in the uh, mid-60s, early mid-60s, what's now Johnson Space Center out of Houston. was located in Virginia. Uh, just by chance, we have a new president, Lyndon Johnson from Texas. And the new headquarters for that went into the Space Center. When the Johnson Space Center became <coughs> the place of, uh, of NASA. <coughs> And they moved it out of out of, out of uh, Virginia, <coughs> not based on any, any fact or anything like that, but based purely on politics. Uh, just what happens: the president now is a resident of Florida and not New York, and so I think uh, I think you may see uh, something <laughs> like that happen. So we'll have to. It'll be interesting to watch and see and see where it all goes. Um, so we have a one point, almost a one point four trillion dollar federal budget. It's the largest that we've had in the history of the country. 700 and roughly 40 of that is military defense. 630 is uh, non-defense. And so it's a, it's a good bargain that was made between the Congress and the White House. And so with that, I'll pass on to Jack some specific items. Uh, um, here, we're working on the uh, STEM elementary school with um, the city and also the school district. Uh, just real quick, uh, the... Uh, Copy. It's in your it's in your slide deck as well. There's, a, there's an insert. Um, the office that administers the uh, grants for construction and, uh, and curriculum programs for public schools and military installations, the Office of Economic Adjustment, part of the Department of Defense, they do a, a assessment of their installations every four years or so. Uh, since this uh, master list of schools on 
on military insula installations was created in 2011. They lasted their, their site assessments in 2018. The school opened in 2019. So this letter was an introduction uh, which was, which was, uh, was sent to the Office of Personnel Management. They the, they're the overseer of the, of the, the program overall. OEA is the administrator of fund. Uh, they need to do a site visit to determine, to actually see the facility to determine that there is a public school and a military installation. We try to make a, uh, a request to them to come down and visit the site before OEA does their site assessment. At, at the earliest date would be 2022. And it takes about a calendar year, so that now we're looking at the 2023. And um, in that process, we're just, we're just trying to take off that curve and see if we can't get personnel down and, uh, and, and see the school now and see if we can't get put on the list um, and, and then move from there. To be on the, you have to be on the list to, uh, to be eligible for OEA grant programs, whether it be for curriculum. Uh, one thing we really like to do is that that's, it's in temporary uh, facilities is, is uh, construction, building construction. So we work with uh, Dr. Rios and his staff on that letter that went out uh, uh, mid-November. Uh, Mr. Hurd's office actually helped deliver that office through the deliver that letter through their uh, DOD's legislative office, and uh, we're just waiting for a response on that. Uh, next would be, if uh, you're familiar with the, the uh, Middle Rio Grande Development Council's trunk radio system, uh, we were successful working with uh, Mr. Hurd's office in, in uh, increasing a, a program uh, agency program line within the Department of Homeland Security Appropriations Bill. Uh, it turns out that, that agency that we're looking at uh, with their emergency communication preparedness account uh, doesn't, it doesn't have the authority to award uh, hardware. I mean, that's what they need, hardware. It doesn't the authority to award grants for hardware. All right, the money that, that is in that account is for technical assistance. So the, that's, that's money that, the money that we kept hearing that was going to be handed down is not going to be handed down. No. Um, the committee has been real lean forward on this, has been working directly with, with her office as well as the MRGDC, is to move that those funds that are in this account to either FEMA or another account that can award a grant for hardware. And that is that is what's happening right now. The committee has been working on that directly with FEMA. Mr. Hurd met with Henry Quaylor yesterday, and he's the vice chair. Democratic Vice Chair of the Homeland, House Homeland Security Appropriations uh, Committee uh, to work exactly this. It's, it's to find the home where a grant can be awarded to MRGDC for this. Do you have any idea how hard it is to get anything out of FEMA? Oh, yeah. But it, it's, <laughs> well, the fund, we have, we, there's funds in hands, but it's mm -hmm. to move it from an account that can only do technical assistance to hardware. So, yeah. so it can't be managed by a state agency, be sent to a state agency and managed through the state? It could. We discussed that with the committee is that there's, there is a, it's a generic Homeland Security grant that is given to, it's a block grant that's given to states. Why can't it run through the uh, grants that we use with the sheriff, like Stone Garden, uh, all of those different grants? Now, I think those would come from a block grant that's to the state in the county. In How does that work, Sheriff? That comes from the state for that. The, the Stone Garden comes straight from the feds, though, right? What no, agency? It's filtered through, through, through the state. But if they filtered this, this, this <coughs> the same way, we would be able to apply and get it in that direction. If it came through those Stone Gardens, if this funding came through, then y'all would be able to <laughs> deal with the radio issues. Yes, but they made it available yeah. for that. That seems to be a quicker way for us to get funding, that agency does, uh, through the way that system works. Mm -hmm. then I'm not saying FEMA can't get it done, but it, you know, it's a $1,000 grant, it's $10,000 worth of paperwork to get it. Um, you know, so uh, <laughs> those, those programs work a lot better for us locally. You know, just, it's just an idea. Yeah, I think, I think it was to cut out the state. We were, uh, we were just delivered to local. Uh -huh. I don't have I don't have an answer for that. That makes no, no just, sense to me. Yeah. But that was the first thing we looked at is anything that where they already got their funding streams from. Yeah. Um, that wasn't that wasn't in the court. So, like I said, to go back to heard heard was speaking with with uh, 
Cuellar yesterday. I don't have I don't have a data readout of that meeting, but um, this is a top priority for Mr. Hurd. It's been a priority for the committee. That doesn't happen all the time. It's a funding committee would be like, hey, we did it. What's your problem? Yeah. Uh, but that, that's not it. So this is um, um, I'm optimistic. Things things are things are happening. I hope to have a readout on, on this uh, today or later this week. Um, so that, that, that concludes the uh, rate of truck system. Um, my understanding also it, it comes from speaking with uh, MRGTC is that the, uh, the master switch folks in Austin are willing to work with the MRGTC if there's success or there's, there's cash in hand, uh, there's, there's a commitment to replacing the system. Um, so to get that from, from the committee um, will we'll, we'll help, we'll help uh, replace that so it won't be completely shut down or, or or zero down. Uh, Quaylar's district is affected the south, so he, he's very, very much in the know of what's happening. So I think, I think we have good allies on that. So that concludes on, on that part. On, on the trunk radio system. Do you want to speak about that? Does anybody have any questions? The one of the deals that we've been visiting with is uh, the school. Mm -hmm. And maybe some property up by the West Gate when you go in. Mm -hmm. I think Commissioner mm -hmm. Cortez said that uh, you know we would be able to do something uh, as, as if we could come up with an acreage of, of what's going to be needed. Mm -hmm. So that might be something to put on the plate. Right. It is. It actually is on this list of projects yep. I'm going to talk to you about right. now. Okay. okay. <coughs> Anything else? Okay. Jack stands here guarding me, so I'm doing anything stupid. I guess <laughs> <laughs> it's a Herculean task for him. Mm -hmm. All right, um, you got a handout, I think, Jack, you gave that out? Okay, so we got a handout over there, sir. Um, and there's about a dozen projects here. We met, I met last month when we didn't have our, our hearing with you. Took advantage of the time I was here to meet with uh, the base and went over again, went over their list of needs. <laughs> and this list is not in, in priority. It's just, maybe I should have put it alphabetically, but I did not. But the ramp project is, uh, there's three projects for drainage. Um, on the ramp at, at Laughlin, and if you remember about a decade ago, we had water up above the wheel levels. <coughs> so um, we put three projects together rather than one project. One project wasn't going to get the funding that it needed. Um, it, would, it would have failed, so we, we broke it into three separate individual projects. They're not linked, because if they linked it, really, it would be kind of a breaking of the law, and we're not going to do that. So we got one of them that has been completed, one's underway, and one's awaiting funding. And by the end of this year, I think it will all be done. Um, the solar farm is, is uh, the judge and the commission's acquisition of that land outside the West Gate. And I don't know how many acres you have. You have 1,300. 1,300 out of the 20, out of the 29. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'm going to jump down to the, <laughs> to the uh, STEM school. And Judge, what you were talking about, I think, is the STEM school is not just for military kids on base. It's also for civilians, for civilian kids to occupy and utilize. And so. To get them on base is always a difficult task. And when we were out there last month, they was just running by us real quickly, kind of like an afterthought, uh, by the uh, by the public affairs folks, that they thought maybe they'd put the school, and rather have it inside on base, would be sited um, contiguous to the edge of the base, so it would be on the west end of the base, and it would be on our east end of that, of that 2,900 acres. And that way the kids could just come right, civilian kids could just come right to school, and I have to go on the base first and then go into the school. And so they're looking at that. There's some, there's some um, hoops to jump through, uh, such as uh, if it's off base, is there, is there funding for it? You know, there's the funding requirements change. That's one of them. Um, and then also we'd have to give that property probably to the Air Force, and that's probably another 12 months of operation. They don't do anything easy, you know, as far as accepting gifts. We'd have to gift them that property. So but I think it's very doable. I think it's a smarter way to go, really, personally. It's really going to be up to the base as to decide how they want to handle it. There's some you know, input from you um, since you're providing the land. Well, I mean, uh, the court has always said all along that uh, we wouldn't do whatever is necessary just to make sure that uh, the one they're protected and mm -hmm. the two, you know, uh, they have enough land. Uh, I think one of the other things, and it's on here, also was some housing. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, on a certain part of this property, versus trying to put it right underneath the flight pattern. Yeah, it, you, it, it would be the the permanent party housing, I think is what you're talking about. And they have, a, they have a facility right now that they would just renovate, and they have the money to do that. And so that's that's one thing they would do. Now, they're also working with the Corps of Engineers out of Dallas 
put up these temporary structures for the high level of training that's going to have to go on. And we have to we have to build another what three or four hundred um, graduates in, in about, about by about two or three years, and that would have to be some sort of a um, residential structures, but they're going to be mobile. Um, be portable. And I think uh, Colonel Gentile a couple of weeks ago and visiting with him. Uh, I think he was going to get with y'all and then yeah. come back and try to get with us. And I think he's, I think his successor is already here. Yeah, he is. Also. And they've already announced he'll be gone in June, mm -hmm. which is a shame because he's really kind of a, you know, we went forward in a cell kind of guy. Yeah. And he's a, he's a delight to work with. So, um, but I think that that's going to be taken care of. They'll, they'll, they'll get with the Corps of Engineers out of Dallas and those folks will um, okay. provide the temporary structures to meet that increase in training, training requirements. Um, the runway extension, which is the city's property, I guess, that's going to be a hard, hard. Uh, okay, the <laughs> runway extension, though, but you're talking about DRT. This airport is out right. here, not Laughlin. Not Laughlin. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Um, it would be the DRT run, um, runway extension. And I know this was done in Oklahoma for about $10 million. The problem here is that we've got a lot more um, situations. We've got people living on that property that have to be bought out. You've got roads that have to be fixed. You've got to have crazy elevation to make it equal to the runway. I think that's about a $60, $80 million project. Well, the, the city had said their airport guy said it was going to be about $60 million. So I'm, I would guess it's going to be a little bit lower than $60 million. My, my own, just my looking at it. Well, the bridge structure to get across Senegas is going to be massive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wouldn't doubt it goes to 80, but it, it's not going to be 8. It's not going to be 10. It's going to be a whole bunch of money. And so um, I think there needs to be um, some sort of an agreement between the, the two the two jurisdictions to say, hey, is this a go or not go? And I think the city now is going to put some money on some studies to see what it will cost to do this and then make a decision how they, how they feel about it. But it's going to be expensive. Yeah. Okay. Now, the value of it is, is to Laughlin and, and to us too, because the more airplanes that Laughlin puts on that runway and takes off, we get credit for those on our on our pass back from FAA. So we'll get more we'll get money out of that. But it may take a hundred years to get any equal you know payback for that. But it's a um, it's an expensive proposition, no doubt about it. Now there's a, there's a benefit for the TX bed down, which is a new trainer. There's about three projects, uh, Milcom projects, that come along with that that aren't, aren't attributed to the Laughlin program. Okay, it'll just be contributed to the Air Force program. And so that will that'll happen in the next three to five years. This is simply more for them to have an alternative landing site in yes, case sir. something happens at the base. Yeah. It, well, not something happens at the base, it's just on, on the number of pilots that we have to put through, which is, which is an increase of about 500 a year. This will be very valuable. But Wouldn't an additional runway at Laughlin accomplish the same thing? Uh huh. Yeah. Sure. At probably less funding. At probably less funding. Yeah. You have to do. Um, to make sure you have to do the study to see how much the cost would be. But sure, I think it would be. It would be a less. Uh, in my estimation, it would be less than. Because I know they've wanted an additional runway built for quite a while. Yeah. So additional pilots. That would be. It would be training. For training, yes, sir. On a regular daily basis. <clears throat> on a regular basis, on it, it's going to be daily. It will be, it'll be a consistent basis, yeah. And it's also to use it in times of, uh, we'll, you know, if, if the runway's occupied, it's full, to use another runway for touch and goes and that kind of thing. But it was done back in the 70s. Sure. And yeah. used it for training. Yeah, this, this airport, yeah. the DRT airport? Yeah. Mm. You know, I'll take your word on it, but yep. it's, 172s yeah. continuous. They just continuous. But we need we need a larger runway. Yeah, this is yeah. this is starting pilots off. Right, right here on the mm -hmm. So it's a it's a uh, just to drop back to that. It's it's a tough it's a tough decision because we did, we get some benefit out of it, but the cost is tremendous. I mean, and the commissioner raised a good point. Could we could we look for putting a runway? On the base now, the base runway would we pay for it or would they pay for it? You know, so um, the DRT would be our responsibility as a community, city county, I guess. Um, if it's going to be on the base, and have to look at is it, are we going to gift it to them or what? You know, so, yeah, so it's, oh, it's just it's, it, it, it's an option. Yeah. But from an operational standpoint, you're correct. I think. 
and, and, and it's easier for them to secure their aircraft. It's easier for them to deal with it if it's sitting on their base. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because you, know, you have you have logistic issues when you start talking about landing planes on a on a uh, public runway. It's done everywhere. I mean, I, no, I mean I know it's done, yeah. but I mean it's still. I mean, we've been out to um, Travis Air Force Base out in California. There's a big big uh, tankers and the big uh, cargo ships. Mm -hmm. They do touch and go to Sacramento Airport all the time. So you'd be sitting there in the lounge, and you see this big gigantic Air Force airplane. Like, what the heck is this? And it's just kind of goes. What they're doing here. So right now we've got one airline and one delivery, like two jets a day, fly over. Everybody in Del Rio knows it. Everybody hears it. This would be continuous. Um, yeah, I don't know what the op-tempo is, I, you know, with regard to continuous. Well, that, that's something that needs to be considered. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. What, what effect it's going to have on the people in there. Because it, it, will. it will. There will be an impact. Exactly. Yeah. I hear every time that thing comes over. Sound of Freedom or something like that, I think. That's American Airlines. Beautiful sound. Yes, sir, yeah. <laughs> Well, American Airlines came through. They lost my luggage on the way here yesterday. They did, they did find it, so that was good. So the, the last two items um, is uh, are, are the um, the wind farm issue, and uh, that's county land. And I know the judge has been out with the wind farm. No, yeah. it's not. It's in the county, but it's not county land. Okay, yeah, it's in the county. Yeah, well. This is something I want to have. Yeah. 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 I didn't mean that. Perfectly clear. Yeah. Yeah. You have to see if you're paying attention to yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah, it's, it's it's in the county, and the big problem there is is really once you lose a low level flight, low level range for training, FAA doesn't give them back to you. Okay, Here, here's the problem: is nobody in any agency, state or federal, regulates wind farms. That's correct. And until you fix that, we're not going to be in a position to do much about it. We have we have made numerous attempts at the state level to get authority to regulate them with zero. Uh, look, um, but if the feds are going to hand out um, tax incentives and stuff like that to build wind farms, that's great. But it should be something stipulated in there that they don't affect encroachment mm -hmm. on airspace. Yeah, there's uh, a clearinghouse that we have a chance to make up. Um Comments so, to on, on low level yeah, I mean, I, you know, we can make all the comments we want, but at, at, at the end of the day, they can go build it, and there's nobody's going to stop them. That's just the reality of it. And 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 until Washington gives somebody <laughs> some authority, be it the FFA on the state, I don't care where it is, but somebody has to have some authority. I'm not saying ban wind farms. I'm, I'm not against mm -hmm. wind farms. But you know, we have three million acres in this county, and there's a few of them that are critical, and the rest of them don't matter. Um, I think the efforts have to be put into authorizing somebody some authority to say, yeah, no, you just can't put it there. Um, and I think that's where the focus needs to be. And I don't know if that focus is with FFA or I, I don't know what agency, but, I mean, they send out it's the FAA. comments and, well, and, and maybe <coughs> the agency needs to regulate it. Maybe it needs to be handled at the state level. I don't know. But, you know, Laughlin or... Everybody sends out comments that these are the encroachment issues and all that, and then at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. And, and so that creates a, a, a problem. And, and, and wind farms are here to stay. Don't misunderstand. Mm -hmm. they, they're an issue. And if you want to look at encroachment issues with wind farms, go down to Kingsville. Yeah. They have a huge problem with this. And, and unfortunately, which is what irritates me about the state, is until we lose a couple of bases from encroachment, they're not going to wake up. But, mm -hmm. um, we, we have to have something in place that gives somebody some sort of authority. It can't be just we start lobbying and trying to figure out how we can ask them to move it. Somebody has to have the ability to say no, and that's the focus that needs to happen here, is, mm -hmm. is, is, is our efforts in Washington and Austin need to be focused on giving somebody some authority that when the base says this is a problem area for us, somebody has some authority to say, yeah, you can't build it there. And, and that's been the issue for a very long time when it comes to, to, to regulating wind farms. Um, so well, states I, like Texas, though, as you well know, um, landowners feel they have the right to do whatever they want to do. And, and, and I'm perfectly 100% support private property rights. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the economic engine that drives this community and most military communities, be it San Antonio, be it Kingsville, be it Dias, I don't care which one it is, if they lose that economic engine, 
and, and when people think that BRAC isn't coming back, but it will come back. In some shape or form, it will come back. Yes. Um, and, and as you well know, and as you said a while ago, somebody can wake up tomorrow and decide to just pick up a base and move it. It doesn't matter what it costs. It, it's politics. Mm -hmm. And so you need everything set on your side to make sure that you have all your issues protected to make sure that no, that's the reason this court went to the trouble it went to to protect Laughlin to make sure we didn't have encroachment issues. But until we get this issue resolved, because wind farms are going to continue to come, and it's a wave of the future, and I'm all for it. Don't misunderstand. <coughs> but until we come up with a way to regulate it, we're going to have a long-term problem. Uh, yeah, there's. I have to agree with you on that. I mean, it needs to be out, it needs to come out of Washington. But I think the focus leadership. that we need y'all to work on in Washington is getting somebody some authority to say yeah. no. <laughs> there's a big no right here, that. Commissioner. We will get on that. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Um, <laughs> Right now, it's it's, it's just a it's just a, it's no, no, a I'm, law right now. No, I'm very familiar with the process now, but we need legislation in place that will that will um, start moving us in the direction of somebody having some authority to say, yeah, that's not the location. You can move it over here, you can go over there, or whatever, but this is not the location. Well, the, the clearinghouse it needs to have some authority to say no to. Yes. I mean, that's just, and we'll we'll get on that. Okay. We'll give you the. The, the negatives and the positives and then some ideas and then so we, maybe we can... Well, it's a long drawn out process. I don't expect it to happen overnight, but if we don't start the process on the state and federal level, we're never going to get right. there. I agree. Uh, the last item um, is small arms range. I was just talking to the sheriff before the meeting here. The base is looking at some sort of a cooperative intergovernmental support agreement with not only local government, but also other federal agencies. They're looking, I had phone calls from several realtors. I think they're looking for 500 acres up on the north side somewhere of the base, not on the 2,900 acres. That right. They had. So. To build a whole new range? Range. But they're shooting with. A small and medium arm range, yeah. Yeah. They're shooting with the rifle yard. that they're shooting with. Who knows, but they're 1,500 yards or something. Yeah, they uh, at least uh, 700 or 800 yard range. Mm -hmm. which, uh, they looked at our gun range up north of town, but that's kind of the big two, two deals that we don't have sufficient land there, and it's too far to go. <coughs> yeah, it wouldn't be on the joint line. There's a lot of land around the National Park. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Um, that's that's really the highlight of this. Check that one out. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of, speaking of national parks, yes, sir. When are we going to look at trying to expand opportunity? You know, it is so difficult to get concessions and do anything in our national park. You know, I mean, and we just got turned down recently. Too. Well, I don't, there's no reason that we shouldn't have. Trail riding, horseback riding, there's no reason we shouldn't have a whole bunch of different options for concessions. And I've always wondered why it's so difficult here. And, and you go up to Mead, um, Lake Mead up there, and uh, they got all kinds of stuff. You go to the Grand Canyon, they got hotels in the park. They got, you know, why is it so difficult for us to accomplish that task here when Zion National Park, I can take my four wheeler and go ride through the park mm -hmm. and do whatever I want. I don't understand why we can't accomplish that task here or, or what we need to do to focus yeah. on <laughs> making it easier for for people to get a concession and operate within the park. Um, you know, I wanted to do a deal one time to, to put some paddle boats and stuff where you could rent them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's next to impossible. Um, we have 180 miles of shoreline. We need to be able to open that park to the public, which then brings in tourism, which then helps the community and and hotels and restaurants and everything else, you know. And, and so I think we need to look at focusing on how we loosen those those restrictions, uh, yeah. restrictions up to where we can actually use it, because it is public land at the end of the day, and the public did pay for it, and the taxpayers paid for it. They ought to be able to use it. Um, so I think we need to focus on trying to do that and, and, and figure out how we can make it where it's not quite a, and, and I know it's a it's a, it's a daunting task. Don't don't misunderstand. I know we've, we've got around and around. We've been at everybody's been at it for a long time, but I think we have to continue focusing on how we're going to to loosen up those restrictions so that we can start bringing some things and people start using the park a little bit more. Well, I think you bring it up and we can talk offline and, and utilize the corridor as the. Uh, 
as, as maybe the voice mm -hmm. to, uh, to push that on the <coughs> Park Service. Uh, and you would think under this administration that uh, having an asset like a, like Amistad, uh would be uh, would be perfect to go not run it like a business, but you mm -hmm. drive out there and you see the old motels and the abandoned RV park mm -hmm. and, and, a, and, a, and there's a huge lake in the marina. Um, and, and, and maybe, no isn't no isn't the answer. No, no, it's not. Maybe, maybe the conversation yes. is is that Texas Parks and Wildlife takes it over, hmm. and it becomes a state park with some federal regulation. I understand it's international waters. I get all those issues, but um, you know maybe it's, it's part of a conversation of, of of how we get from point A to point B, and, and I mean. We all know how it works in Washington. It, it takes a long time, but we need to, to to loosen those restrictions so we can start expanding that park into something that benefits yes, us to be. There's a lot of money to be made from this yeah. community and, and tourism if you can access the park. People will drive down here and ride their horses on trails. They'll, I mean, there's a million things they can do, and there's a whole lot of land that just sits there. Yeah, yeah you need to tourism. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine you don't want to turn it into Las Vegas. No, unless they want to build a casino. <laughs> 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 no. but, uh, we had that opportunity, and then our forefathers ran them out. Yeah. <laughs> they have the Native American land here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where are we at? Where we're done. Um, the only thing I would tell you is that uh, <coughs> with the Air Force, they have a marina, and it took us over over a year to get approval just for them to sell gas people coming through. They will not give any any um, uses authorization because of the insurance issue. So they turn us down on that but the, the, the Air Force has to sell gas to people voters on the on the lake. So that's a minor victory by by every measure. But we we'll walk away with um, the idea about looking at the utilization of the park which you brought up and then also on um, the wind farm, see if we can get somebody to take some responsibility there. And then also, uh, do y'all do work for us the, uh, in Washington, or do y'all do work for us in Austin, too? Just in Washington. Just in Washington. Yeah. Okay. We, we try to get over to Austin when they have their annual meeting next week. The answer? That way I don't have to fill out more paperwork. Oh, is no. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Thanks for your time. Everybody. Thank you all for coming. Thank, Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Item 13, budget allotment of $24,000 for solid waste to be picked up in Valverde County by the county precincts. The uh, money would come out of contingency. So motion to approve. Second. second. I have a motion, Commissioner Middleton. Second, Commissioner Wardlow. Any questions? All those in favor? All right. Five zero vote. Item 14, modification of contract between Laughlin Air Force Base and Valverde Sheriff's Office. Sheriff, what is this? Judge, commissioners, uh, the modification on this uh, contractor agreement is uh, due to uh, name changes. Uh, some of the personnel has changed uh, from the uh, Laughlin Air Force Base side, so they're just updating the information. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nelson. Second, Commissioner Flores. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Five zero vote. That was quick, right, sir? Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, amendment plat for Lantry, West Branch. Uh, Got it, sir? Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's his court name on this ranch? That's West Branch. West and through the French. So he stored it. Stored became the last thing I don't know. I have no idea. This is about 10 miles west of Lancaster. Right. This one's behind you, no? No, no, no. This is up by the other one. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's the other one. This is in prison number four. Yeah. yeah. That's 10 miles west of Lancaster. It's about 10 miles west, of, right out of Lancaster. Yeah, it's so just a uh, little rest area on this side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is an amending plat. They're just basically changing uh, two lots, the lot 32 and lot 36. These two lots are not in Amistad land use. 
How and much land are we talking about, more or less, Mr. Pilar? Huh? How much land are we talking about? Okay, more they're less? taking away this part. Okay. And they're adding this. This is 16 acres, and they're adding 24. 24. So they're taking away 16, and they're adding 24 to lot 32. And they're adding a small strip of land over here that is spent. That is did it. They're just correcting that. And on lot 36, they're just adding 0 .7, 0 .7 acres. This complies with state and uh, local rules? Yes. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, motion, Commissioner Flores. Second, Commissioner Nettleton. Any other anybody? Any questions? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Uh, item 16, adoption of Alberti County Hazard it Communications has to Program. Has to oh. okay. Judge. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to point out to the court that the plats, when they're amended this way, they need to be reported in my office. Okay. After the amendment, after they're accepted. But I need a big plat. I mean, like the he one has the big plat that will be brought to you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Good. Yeah. Good morning. Morning. Juanita isn't here, so I'm reading something. <laughs> um, no. <y 'all. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner's Court had asked this item to be tabled in order for the court to review the hazmat plan. There were some revisions done to the current plan, which were to incorporate the name of Valverde County and also to share where the MSDS notebooks will be. There will be one in our office and in her office. Binders will be sent to all departments, which we have inventory for all items which required an SDS sheet. These binders will be sent to the departments <coughs> to be placed in an area readily available for staff. HR and risk management will be going, will have a binder with all the inventory listings by department and the SDS sheets also available to review. This year we were, we were not required to report anything to the state, but we do have to keep, I'm sorry. Have any of y'all seen the plan? I haven't seen it. Yeah. Okay. It says that adoption of already County Hazard Communication Program. We've oh. not seen it. So I don't okay. know. I, so they don't want to. Motion to the table. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 we'll we'll go the table table <laughs> Second, Commissioner Flotis. Any other questions? <laughs> no. Vote. All right. Five zero vote. And I'm sorry. I mean, I, I was asking questions, but I hadn't seen it. Okay. All right. 17, Human Resources Monthly Report from December 11, 2019 through January 8, 2019. Move. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. Any questions? All those in favor? All right. Five right. zero vote. Uh, item 18, closed session, consultation pursuant to Texas government code. A attorney client privilege. We'll take a little break and we'll go to the restroom. Well, I'm going to go to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. Either way, that's what we're doing. We're taking a break. We don't have a ticket. Uh, we don't have any he didn't, She didn't have any tickets. So. I've got it. Oh, okay. Oh. Then we ran into a little problem on Friday. Mm -hmm. visit with you. Yes, sir. You're on. You come with. We ready? Yes, sir. Uh, court will not come back in session. 10 o'clock. No executive session. Commissioner's comments, if any. Judges' comments. All I want to say is uh, thank y'all for everything. And I'm saying that because this year really went by quick. Uh, and I think we got a lot of stuff done. You know, we were outside right now just <coughs> taking a picture of some of the equipment. All that was done without a tax rate increase, without a tax note. And it's something that building maintenance and, and our kids have, have never had. Uh, I want to say thank you, Judge, and the commissioners for making it possible. Also, the, I think this Saturday is the stock show, mm -hmm. right? So people come out. Uh, March 7th is... Uh, well, it actually starts March March 5th, which the Vietnam uh, Veterans Wall will be here, and it will be put, already put up. March 7th is also that Saturday, and it's going to be a busy Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. That's also the the weekend of the robotics, and there's a reason to come in, too. So we've got a lot of stuff going on, and again, Commissioners, thank you all so much. Uh, item 21, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.